In December 2019, Chinese authorities alerted the global medicine community that a new virus is spreading within its borders. The virus was identified as a severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2, which causes the disease called COVID-19, simply known as the coronavirus. Some of the common symptoms include coughing, fever, shortness of breath, headaches, and fatigue, but in rare cases, COVID-19 leads to severe respiratory problems, kidney failure, and even death. In March 2020, the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a global pandemic, and as of December 2020, the United States has over 6.2 million active cases and is averaging well over 150,000 new cases per day. It has now almost been a year since the coronavirus hit U.S. shores and is showing no signs of stopping. However, the battle isn't over yet, and there is a solution that can slow down the spread and prevent further unnecessary losses of life. We have life-saving weapons at our disposal masks. But even though we have easy access to them, mask wearing in COVID-19 is a bit complicated. At the beginning of the pandemic, there was a shortage of medical grade masks and authorities advised the public to stop buying them in order to conserve supplies for healthcare workers. In addition, health officials have changed their mind about mask wearing and other authorities have provided confusing information to the public. Our understanding of how the virus spreads has also changed with more experience and with new data being found. Furthermore, there are many different types of masks available, and lastly, the topic of mask wearing has gotten political within the US. In this video, we will clear up the skepticism that revolves around masks and debunk common misconceptions that people have. Despite early confusion about the effectiveness of masks, every single scientist has come to the same conclusion. Mask usage is critical to control and ultimately stop the spread of COVID-19. The key route of transmission for the coronavirus is through droplets and particles that fly out of our mouths and travel through the air. The important thing to note is that these droplets are produced not only when we cough or sneeze, but they also come out when we talk. These COVID-19 particles then form into microscopic aerosols that can linger in the air for up to 30 hours infecting dozens of unwitting people. The Center for Disease Control calls mask wearing a form of quote-unquote source control. According to the CDC, Source control refers to the use of well-fitting cloth face masks or face masks to cover a person's mouth and nose to prevent the spread of respiratory secretions when they are talking, sneezing, or coughing. Masks work by protecting both the wearer and other people around the wearer from infection through preventing the transmission of COVID-19 particles out of the mouth and nose. The reason why top health officials advise wearing a mask at all times in public is that COVID-19, unlike other viruses, can be spread by asymptomatic carriers. This means that you could still have and be spreading the virus without showing any symptoms of it. Masks also work by decreasing the viral load one receives if they are exposed to the coronavirus. Congregating in confined spaces without masks increase the amount of virus entering the body and will cause worse than normal symptoms to occur. Wearing a mask, though it will not eliminate the risk of contracting COVID-19, will result in a smaller viral load and ensure that dangerous symptoms do not develop. In an ideal world, the elimination of COVID-19 can be done simply by wearing masks. Epidemiologists calculate the spread of a virus with something called an R-value. The R-value is how many people the average infected person will infect. Currently, COVID-19 has an R-value of somewhere between 2 and 3. If 80% of people wore an 80% effective mask, the R-value would decrease to just below 1, and the pandemic could be brought to a halt. If 100% of people wore 100% effective masks, the pandemic could end in a matter of weeks, as the low R value would mean that most people were not transmitting the virus. There are a variety of different mask types to choose from. The best are N95 masks, high-grade masks typically used in medical fields as well as some construction work. The CDC does not recommend using these, as they need to be rationed for frontline healthcare workers. Bandanas are often used as makeshift masks, and while helpful, they do not do enough to stop the spread of droplets. A bandana will typically decrease the spread of droplets from an average of 8 feet away from an unmasked person to around 4 feet. Homemade cotton masks, common at the beginning of the pandemic, can reduce the spread from 8 feet to about 2 feet. The ideal mask for the everyday person is a store-bought 3-layer mask. These masks are designed with multiple layers and tightly woven cotton to limit the spread of droplets as much as possible. A high-quality cotton mask can be as much as 95% effective at stopping droplets. General surgical masks are also effective at stopping droplets, though these are not intended to be worn multiple times and are known to cause environmental issues after they are disposed of. One type of mask that medical experts caution against are buffs and gaiters made out of synthetic materials. 
These synthetic materials are actually counterproductive as they break up COVID-19 droplets, allowing them to linger in the air and infect people, ultimately causing more harm than good. One thing to note is that masks are not a replacement for social distancing. In fact, they only work when paired with a strict social distancing regimen. Social distancing while wearing masks is the most effective way to stop the spread of the coronavirus since it's just not possible to infect people if they're not near you. The CDC recommends staying at least six feet away from people not in your household, avoiding congregating indoors, and to choose outdoor activities if you do choose to socialize. New mask mandates across America have given breed to a dangerous epidemic. Conspiracy theories. Far too many people, including sitting members of Congress, have peddled the idea that masks are actually dangerous and could potentially make you more likely to contract the coronavirus. This is completely false. One of the common claims is that mask wearing will lead to hypoxia, where the body is deprived of the oxygen and begins shutting down. Dr. Richard Mejigo of the World Health Organization says there is no truth to the claims that masks cause hypoxia, and that there have been zero incidents of anyone becoming hypoxic, despite the many billions of people who have worn masks during the pandemic. Face coverings are simply just filters. They filter out larger particle invaders like viruses and bacteria, but still let smaller particles in. The top grade N95 masks that health care workers use when caring for COVID-19 patients filter out 95% of particles that are 0.3 microns or larger. Oxygen is 5 ten thousandths of a micron. In other words, the molecules we breathe in and out are several magnitudes smaller than the infectious particles the face coverings are filtering out. However, these facts have not stopped conspiracies from spreading. A Nigerian newspaper ran an article promoting lifting your face mask every 10 minutes in order to recirculate air, a dangerous idea that increases the risk of infection for no reason. There is no scientific basis for this claim. Another concern going around is the fear of hypercapnia. This is where carbon dioxide exceeds normal levels in the blood. Some believe air will get trapped in the mask and breathe in repeatedly, diminishing its oxygen content. This is also false. Professor Keith Neal, an epidemiologist at the University of Nottingham with over 30 years of experience handling SARS, the swine flu, and Ebola, says the only way this could happen is with an airtight mask that is sealed perfectly to your face. There are no masks currently in the market that are airtight enough to lead to carbon dioxide poisoning. There have been very real issues of mask anxiety during the pandemic. Some people are more prone to feeling claustrophobic when wearing a mask. Dr. Shannon Sauer Zavala, a psychologist at the University of Kentucky, believes that this anxiety is linked to hypoxia conspiracy theories. Thinking that negative outcomes are likely to happen often makes people feel anxious, and of course, anxiety is associated with physiological changes, like a racing heart, shortness of breath, and muscle changes, Sawyer Zavala said. Anxiety has the potential to induce hypoxia-like symptoms, which helps explain a portion of where the hypoxia fear comes from. Mask anxiety is very real, and comes from a combination of two main factors, psychological and physiological responses to masks. Psychological responses include feelings of vulnerability, uncertainty, and fear, while physiological responses include a rapid heartbeat, heavy breathing, and breaking out in sweat. The mouth, nose, and cheeks are very thermosensitive, and the increased heat from breathing in an enclosed mask can cause the entire body to feel hot. Fortunately, the CDC has multiple possible solutions to mask anxiety, and anxiety in general. The first of the three main recommendations is diaphragmatic breathing, where you breathe through your nose and try breathing from the diaphragm, where your belly expands in and out instead of your chest going up and down. It helps to imagine that you have a balloon in your stomach. Take longer to exhale than inhale, perhaps inhaling for three seconds and exhaling for four. Controlled conscious breathing like this reduces anxiety and allays fears of hypoxia. Second, the CDC recommends repeating a mantra to handle anxiety. A phrase, word, or even just a sound that helps focus and take your mind off anxiety can help a mask wearer cope with any struggles they may be having. Third, the CDC recommends practicing mindfulness by paying attention to what is really occurring in the present moment instead of becoming immersed in self-created thoughts and worries. Masks have also been the subject of a partisan war in America, fought between Democrats and Republicans. In the first months of the pandemic, many Democratic governors instituted mask mandates, while Republican governors decided not to. These decisions mirror the opinions of their constituents. A Pew survey conducted in June found that only 49% of conservative Republicans had worn masks all or most of the time in the prior month, whereas 83% of liberal Democrats reported near constant mask usage while in public. President Trump refused to wear masks until July 12th, and Texas Representative Louie Gomer suggested without evidence that he had contracted COVID-19 due to wearing a mask. 
Democratic leaders also struggled with mask wearing, as California Governor Gavin Newsom was caught at an indoor diner unmasked, eroding trust in the government at a time when trust is needed most. There is also a cultural issue at play when it comes to mask usage. America has a culture steeped in individualism, and many citizens value their individual freedoms more than the collective good. This attitude has led many to disregard mass use, believing it impedes on their rights. As a result, America is currently gaining more than 1 million coronavirus cases every week. Asian countries, on the other hand, have a culture that generally prioritizes societal well-being over the individual, as well as a historic culture of mass usage. Every cold and flu season, Chinese, Japanese, and Korean people don masks in order to stop themselves from unknowingly spreading diseases. This mentality has paid dividends during the COVID-19 pandemic. Japan has had only 163,000 cases during the entire pandemic, and South Korea has had only 39,000 cases. These numbers are shockingly low when compared to America's more than 15 million cases. Japan, South Korea, and many other Asian countries control the spread without the help of the vaccine, but with just strict adherence to masking and social distancing guidelines. Despite the various conspiracy theorists and early contradictory information, the science is clear. Mask wearing is critical to controlling the COVID-19 pandemic. Everyone should be wearing at least a triple layered cloth mask whenever they interact with people outside their household. Through mask wearing and social distancing, America could follow the lead of Asian countries and finally control and eradicate the pandemic.